I am Shuchita. I am the national president of the All India Students Association. And I have been uh, the JNU Students Union president in 2012. Okay, we'll start off with, um, there was an announcement a few days ago by a press conference by the government about giving autonomy to the universities. What does that mean and why, uh, why is the All India Students Association opposed to that? Uh, so this government, the present uh, BJP government is known for, you know, twisting words. I mean, they, what they do, they propagate exactly the opposite. So this government is known for uh, snatching away autonomy of academic institutions, academic autonomy of uh, institutions, you know, the autonomy of uh, thinking freely, debating freely or researching on whatever topic you are known for. And that is why they probably, they have brought in a very dangerous uh, proposal by the University Grants Commission. It was a proposal by the University Grants Commission, which has now been declared by the MHRD, and it's now a part of the Gazette of India. <coughs> so this, <coughs> the Minister of Human Resource Development says that uh, they're granting autonomy to 62 st uh, central universities, state universities, and some private universities. And they say that it's a historic day for Indian education that, you know, you have been granted autonomy and you can do whatever you want and, you know, you are free. Uh, in essence, what he did not say, you know, what he had hidden in that press conference is that uh, it is a financial autonomy in the sense that the universities uh, are now, quote-unquote, free to open new courses provided they don't want fund from the government. So this is the entire state... Uh, the entire statement that is written in the Gazette of India. And our MHRD had, you know, uh, kept silent on the letter part that provided you don't want funds from the government. So essentially what they're doing is they are asking the universities to uh, open self-financing courses that the government will no more fund education, uh, higher education. And uh, these universities will open courses for which they must take uh, the necessary cost from the students themselves. Now some of the universities which has been which have been granted autonomy, uh, the list might become uh, you know uh, longer later on. So, uh, some of the universities are the best universities in the country. So these are the best universities in the country. There is a categorization. There is a so the NAC gives them gradation according to some criteria. That is a separate story. But uh, these universities are the best universities in the country. And in a country like India, these universities have been best because they have been public funded. And they have been able to produce, uh, you know, best research scholars. Also because people from the most marginalized section, people from the, you know, common masses, com people, students from uh, very common background, uh, marginalized backgrounds have been able to come to these universities and achieve great academic excellence. The reason being that these have been private, uh, public funded. Uh, once it becomes self-financed, then it is absolutely clear that the gates of the best universities in the country are now closed for the poor. So the poor are being essentially asked not to enter uh, the best universities in the country. It's a, it's a kind of an apartheid that you cannot enter best universities in the country because you are poor, because you are family cannot pay for your education. So that is it. So, you know, it's it's a dangerous proposal of commercialism. And in a country like India, which uh, which has been colonized for 200 years, and, you know, for 200 years, Indians have been denied uh, opportunities of uh, education, of developing, of prospering. And after independence, the promises of an independent nation was to provide uh, equal access to uh, rights such as education and after 70 years of independence uh, a government comes which says that uh, poor can enter the students. So what response is the student association planning to this announcement? Like how are you planning to respond to it? We have already come out with a statement whereby we have called the first, we have called the bluff of the MHRD press uh, statement and we have said that it is not an autonomy, it is essentially self-financing, it is essentially privatization. And we have also said that, uh, you know, it is actually um, centralization, more and more centralization of 
uh, administration of the government because now as if the UGC is being done away with the UGC the University Grants Commission is being done away with the vice chancellors are appointed by the MHRD so now it is directly under the MHRD and we know that this fascist regime has been appointing vice chancellors according to their own political choice so whoever is a we are politically loyal to the uh, to the government with its package of you know political ideas which includes saffronization which includes communalization and a very regressive idea of india very regressive idea of history so those vice chancellors have now given have been given free hand so the the fact that you know they are they are free to open courses whatever courses in self financing so firstly they will take money from the students and they will also open regressive courses anti science anti knowledge uh, courses that is the first thing the second thing is that what is happening in the country right now is also kind of inspiring because after four years of this regime uh, and throughout these four years there has been a very uh, strong resistance uh, from different sections of the uh, society especially the students right now we are seeing that students are there on the streets they are opposing this regime and uh, uh, our organization we are planning to uh, you know unite uh, students of uh, especially these 62 universities and also reach out to colleges uh, you know and schools because those are the generations who will come to the universities and and build up a massive resistance against this already there are some big protests happening in delhi yeah. uh, on the one hand jnu is having its own struggle to defend the 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 existence of that university because jnu is uh, you know jnu is a university which i think is which which is very rare i think in the world where you get uh, best quality of education almost paying nothing so you know people like me who have come from very small town and you know who would not have studied if there was no jnu i would have been most probably married off and Uh, you know, I would not have an independent career if there was no JNU. So JNU is that kind of a dream destination for uh, for women, for poor, for Dalits, for so many. So and there is a crackdown on JNU right now. So they are trying to snatch away whatever JNU is known for. So JNU is having its own struggle, and JNU students are saying that this autonomy is actually essentially strengthening the authoritarian regime of the uh, BJP appointed vice chancellor. On the other hand. there is a big university another big university the uh, essential university called the what du delhi university the the delhi university teachers association are they are also organizing big rallies so in delhi university what they have done delhi university is not in the list of the 62 uh, universities which are, which, are, which have been granted autonomy in the first place but in delhi university they are saying they, they have come out with a formula of 70 30 funding ratio so they they are saying that the delhi university will have to raise 30 percent of the uh, you know uh, funding this thing funding requirements uh, so the delhi university teachers association has been leading uh, a huge protest aisa is a part of that protest and in the coming days you know jnsu duta and other universities they will come together and they we are looking forward for a massive resistance against this um since we arrived been been I mean, every day we're reading the news, protests happening at JNU. Um, one of the things they were saying they're protests about sexual harassment. Um, do you want to say a bit about those protests and also how they relate to the more general movement in India against gender violence? Uh, so you know, as I told you that right now India is uh, under a fascist government. Anyway, gender situations in India were never good, especially you know generally in the society and also in workplaces where where women uh, go to work or go to study. So there uh, there has been you know it has been a long-standing demand of the women's movement in India that there should be effective anti-sexual harassment cells in workplaces so that when women come to uh, work in uh, uh, somewhere or go to study, those places should be secure. You know, and uh, those places you know women should not. uh you know the sexual harassment should not be a deterrent for women not to go out etc yeah. but what has happened uh, after you know uh, and, uh, in india under modi is uh, this government has they have given a very popular slogan which is beti bachao beti padhao so it means save daughters and educate daughters 
and this beti bachao beti bachao is save daughters right so as i told you that just like autonomy it's another farce kind of uh, rhetoric in the name of beti bachao what they have been doing is uh, they have been flaring up communal tension in india so they have been saying that it is the muslim men who are threat to uh, india indian betis indian daughters Uh, and they have uh, come out with theories of love jihad and what not that if any hindu woman falls in love with a muslim woman a muslim man yeah. so that becomes a, a big communal tension now this beti bachao beti padhao which was uh, earlier been used to target muslim um, uh, community uh, uh, in this phase we are saying that it is the women who are coming out in large numbers against this farce they are saying that you know we have realized that we are being used this slogan is being used to target muslims whereas we ourselves women are women themselves uh, are being restrained there is a attack on them so there the two uh, universities uh, in two universities this beti bachao beti padhao rhetoric has been exposed like that. one is the banaras hindu university banaras which is in varanasi which is the constituency of the prime minister So Banaras Hindu University BHU is a central university, and BHU is a very and BHU uh, for everyone's information is not a so-called left university. You know, it is not. Uh, there is no union, so there is no left union there. Rather, in BHU, the we call it shakhas of the RSS. So shakhas means branches of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh, which is the uh, parent organization of the BJP. So. BHU only RSS shakhas RSS branches are allowed to hold discussions no other political activity is allowed and in BHU uh, when the prime minister uh, was contesting BHU was used as a BHU students were used as campaigners for the prime minister so it is kind of their model university you know and the vice chancellors of BHU have made that university transformed that university in a perfect prism so uh, women uh, the kind of restrictions that are there on women is you can't think that that can exist in a in a in, in india in 21st century and that too in a in the prime minister's constituency so the women's hostel uh, it uh, the non veg is forbidden in the women's hostel where it is available men can eat non veg but it is forbidden in the women's hostel uh, curfew timing is everywhere so the women are supposed to come back by 6 o'clock in the evening whereas men can you know there uh, there is no restriction there is a dress code on women so they are not supposed to wear skirts and whatever you know there so there is a rule saying that you should be properly quote and quote properly dressed when you and this is a part of the written uh, hostel rule uh, the women cannot use mobile phones most probably after 8 o'clock in the hostel and if even if they talk to their parents you know they can talk to they have a right to talk to whomever they want but even if they talk to their parents the hostel warden will come and threaten them and will seize their uh, cell phone the women students are made to uh, sign an affidavit saying that uh, you know so a woman student who has cleared the entrance exam who has got enough marks to get through uh, one of the bh is a very good university academically so the central university that woman student is asked to sign an affidavit that i will not take part in any protest action and it is only for the women student so you know uh, getting through an entrance exam is not enough they will have to sign this slavery bond yeah. so all these rules are there now what happened in bhu uh, one of the women was molested at 6 o'clock while mosulish was coming back to her hostel and she went to the proctor board com- you know she wanted to file a complaint that uh, this has happened and you please in and the university administration the proctor board and the hostel warden told her that uh, it is your fault you were out at 6 o'clock and so it is your fault and that kind of broke uh, every patience for the women and they went out uh, to the streets and they f- they they dared every administrative action they said that your rhetoric of beti bachao beti padhao is a Uh, false certainly here it it is a survival question for us it is you know how can we be educated if it is a survival question for us so bhu women uh, from the prime minister's own constitution they have exposed in jnu jnu there has been a legacy of progressive student movement there has been an institution called the gender sensitization committee against sexual harassment so this gender sensitization committee against sexual harassment has been an autonomous institution 
and uh, in JNU we believe you know the student movement had ensured that gender equality uh, is more established than any other part of India. So there is no hostile addiction, there is no dress code, there is you know there is no restriction on women. Yeah. Now this vice chancellor, the RSS appointed vice chancellor, has dismantled this GS cash and they have formed an ICC in place of that. And this I in this ICC. The representatives, those who will inquire, ICC is an internal complaints committee. So those who are a part of the ICC are nominated by the vice chancellor. They are not elected. So they are men. They, they are representatives of the vice chancellor. So it reinforces the hierarchy that already exists. Now, if a woman student wants to complain against, say for example, anyone higher up, you know, anyone who is close to the vice chancellor, anyone who is a teacher, what is the guarantee that the woman student will get justice because her career will be destroyed? So that is precisely what has happened in jail. And there is this teacher, Atul Zahari, who is even a right-hand man of the vice chancellor. And uh, nine women students have filed a fire against Atul Zahari. And it is now, I think, almost what, more than, obviously more than a week. The police has not taken any action. He was arrested only for 45 minutes. He was arrested and he was granted bail within 45 minutes. There has been no action from the university administration. This man goes to the laboratory. He, he's a science teacher. He's a life science teacher. This man goes to the laboratory and think about those nine women who have filed complaint. They have, they have, they have been forced to quit their study. So this is what the uh, BJP government is doing to the women, to the so-called daughters of India. And there is a big women's movement uh, coming out of this university saying that you know we have a right to study. And your, uh, just because you want to shield your man, that cannot snatch away. So they're demanding reinstatement of GS cash, an autonomous anti-sexual harassment body. They're demanding punishment of this man. Anything else you want to add? Uh -huh, in the sense that the, the you know this what is happening in India right now is this this government is uh, there is a massive attack on the idea of university. The fact that for the progress of any nation, especially a nation like India, especially a country like India, you need good quality public funded institutions which will, which will, which will liberate you from your social deprivation, you know, your social backwardness and everything. That will expose you to new knowledge and that will, that, that will give you social mobility and that will liberate your world. This government is against the idea of any kind of university. So there has been a massive attack on uh, universities, right? on JNU, on HCU, on the kind of student movement that we have. So the, the student movements of JNU, HCU and different other parts, they have been not only talking about their own rights, their own rights of a affordable education, but they have also been talking about uh, movements, people's movement in the country, movements of the working class, movements of the deprived people, movements of the minorities, of the women, of the Dalits. So now these students are being called anti-national. You know, just because they're speaking against the government and the students are saying that we are the real patriots. We love our country, we love, uh, we love the people of our country and that is where we're defending people of our country against the government. And this government who, uh, who, who, have been, who have been defending, who have been shielding corporate looters, you know, um, multinational corporates, corporations, they're calling themselves nationalists and the students of a nation are being called anti-national. But what is positive is that there is a very strong student movement right now in the country. And that is the ray of hope, I mean. Not only students, all, every other section, but yes, obviously, the students are giving a parallel narrative to what is called nationalism, what is called Indian nationalism. So we're saying Indian nationalism is for Indian people. Indian nationalism is not for corporate voters. Indian nationalism doesn't mean communal division. Indian nationalism means building up an India for, uh, you know, as we have called, people first patriotism. You know, it's not corporate first patriotism. It is not hatred filled patriotism where Hindus would need to hate Muslims. And, you know, people would not identify themselves as human beings or Indian citizens. They would identify themselves as according to their religion. So that is not our idea of nationalism. So that is it.